Thank you for joining me in the first edition of the What's New in Bobcam V6 webinar series. The goal of today's webinar is to review three new features of the Bobcam V6 that we feel will make your life easier when programming your parts. Now, as you know, my name's Al DePaulo. I'm the voice of the After Dark video series. You can find me on Instagram at Al DePaulo or hashtag Bobcat After Dark. Now, in today's webinar, we're going to review drilling optimization. Ask yourself, have you ever struggled with the order in which holes are drilled? Or have you ever sacrificed efficiency for safety. Bobcam's V6 drilling sequencing options provide multiple choices to optimize the order your holes are drilled. We have new sorting options. There's five of them. We have reverse each operation, which we'll review in today's webinar. And then we also have pick order, which you can pick the order in which you're going to drill. Now, when drilling, there's two main factors you look at. How fast you can get through the holes and moving safely to avoid clamps and fixtures. Bobcam V6 helps you with both of these by providing these new sorting options. Again, the benefit is improve drilling efficiency and reduce cycle times. Now, we're also going to look at gouge checking with check surfaces. Uh, ask yourself, have you ever been frustrated trying to create toolpath that only cuts specific areas of your model or trying to avoid cutting into walls, pre-machined surfaces, or even work holding. Bobcam's V6 gouge checking provides another level of containment for your 3D toolpaths. Using check surfaces, you can trim away unwanted toolpath or avoid areas of your model by a user-defined value. Okay, so you can select single or multiple surfaces that you want to avoid. You can check against the tool or the tool end holder. You can also retract or, or bump up your tool path if it runs into contact with either this single surface or multiple surface, either your tool or your tool holder. Okay, you can also trim away your tool path. So if it makes contact with any of these surfaces, you can trim that tool path away. Now the big benefit here is more control over where your tool does and does not go. Now the last subject we're going to talk about is tool path updates for geometry changes. Ask yourself, are the latest design changes reflected in my tool path? You know, uh, the changed hole location or maybe an additional clearance amount that we added. You know, or maybe, hmm, you know, I fully programmed this part, but instead of holding it in a vise, maybe I want to use a fixture plate instead. Let's face it, design changes happen, and your ability to quickly update for them makes you a better and faster programmer, okay? So we're going to talk about updating single features, okay? Updating all your features at once. You know, and also updating for changing of your machine setup location or your work offset. The big benefit here is significantly faster and easier updates for your design changes. Now, Bobcam for SolidWorks, this is our V6. Fewer steps get you there quicker. Better cuts provides more options for your cutting and also that Fewer steps, better cuts, that equals more profit. More profit for your shop. Now download your demo at bobcad.com or you can call us at 877-262-2231 at extension 123 for your live one-on-one -on -one personal demo or to review any questions that you, you might have. All right, now let's get into the webinar. Okay, guys, the first file we want to look at on drill optimization has to do with sequencing. Uh, as you can see, there's a bunch of holes that we want to machine on this plate here. Uh, let's go ahead and edit our feature 
and look at some of the new options that we have. So as you can see under uh, in the tree or explorer view, machine sequence is where we want to look. And then these are the different uh, sorting options that you have which control uh, the sequence or the order in which the holes are going to be drilled in. Okay, so machine sequence is where we go. And then under the sort order, we can make some adjustments as far as uh, what order the holes are going to be drilled in. So the first one we want to look at is the X orientation. We're going to go ahead and compute this and we'll take a look at our tool path. We'll just run this through a back plot. And uh, here you can see how we're drilling along the X axis. We're doing a zigzag pattern and it works its way left to right. Uh, right to left going back and forth and drilling these holes okay so that's the first thing that we want to look at let's go ahead and edit this again we're gonna go to machine sequence and now we're gonna just switch it to the Y direction okay so we're gonna set it to Y uh, we're gonna go ahead and recompute that's gonna update the direction we're gonna back plot it and now you're gonna see that it's gonna be cutting along in the Y direction working a zigzag back and forth okay so this is the type of optimization we're talking about uh, again cutting along in X or cutting along in Y now the other option you have here is also a custom direction uh, depending on the the placement or the orientation of the holes we may want to adjust the angle in which they're cutting at I'm gonna put this on a 45 and recompute and now you can see the drilling order is going to run along on a 45 degree angle again this is the user controlled sorting order with either an x direction y direction or a custom direction now another thing that we've done here that's very useful if we go to machine sequence let's go to the x direction and i just want to look at start location for a moment you know right now it's set to the back corner you can move this up to the front corner and you're going to see that's going to change where it's going to start drilling from you know see how it's drilling from this first hole here okay uh, you can also change that if we go back to machine sequence maybe you want it to be on the right side and recompute that and now you're going to see the first hole that it drills is on the right side so these are just some of the new controls that you have for drill optimization okay guys here's the second file we want to look at at drill optimization uh, again, when we're editing these features, where these new options are, are under the machine sequence. And in this case, we want to look at our closest distance. Okay, so we have some other options in here. We're going to look at closest distance, and then we're going to change our start location of the front corner here and go ahead and compute. And here we can see that the drilling routine is going to start in that front corner and then it's going to run around in that direction. Now, in most scenarios, using the closest is going to work out really well. But there are cases where you want a little more control over the cut order and cutting along in X or cutting along Y isn't really going to make sense. And, you know, when we're drilling holes, we're talking about speed and we're talking about safety. And you're probably or you could have some clamps that are going to be holding your workpiece to your table or to your subplate. Uh, and a lot of times you have to watch out for these things, okay? So that's where the next option comes in really handy. If we go to sequence and we do pick order, now you're going to be able to go through and hover over the hole that you want to start with. And then you can just kind of connect the dots here in the order that you want. Maybe there's a clamp right there, so we want to move over. And then we kind of just come around like this. And this gives us a custom order. It's really easy to set up. Once you get everything done, we can check it down, recompute, and now you can see the updated drill order follows the order in which I pick those holes. All right, so again, this is great for clamp avoidance, really helping with both the speed and the safety factor. Here's our next file for the drill optimization. Uh, what we want to do is go ahead and edit this feature, go to machine sequence, and I'm going to uncheck this reverse each operation first and recompute. Uh, as you can see, I'm spot drilling or drilling some of these holes here. I am machining on two different Z levels. Uh, using the uh, the drill uh, groups in order to accommodate for that to, to jump over that corner there. So here you can see we started in this hole and we worked all the way through and then we were done. 
when we go to our drill, you're going to see that it's starting in this corner here. And depending on how big the plate you're working on or how many holes you need to drill, uh, starting over at the first hole uh, can mean uh, quite a bit. This has to do with the speed side of drilling. Uh, having to go back to that start hole, it can cost you seconds. And uh, over long runs, it can cost you uh, minutes, dollars, lot, lots of money. So here we go. We come in here, machine sequence, reverse each drill operation. We recompute. Again, when we spot or center drill this, it's going to work all the way over. You can see it ends over here. And then when we come back and we drill this, you can see that it starts over on the right and then ends on the left. Another great optimization feature. Okay, on the next file we're looking at here, just want to make it clear, we didn't leave out your four axis, five axis, your mill turn, your cross drilling, your multi-axis drilling. We didn't leave you guys out. These sorting routines work in wrapping groups, they work in cross drilling, uh, you know, so any type of drilling that you're doing, these optimization tools are available for you, allowing you to speed up your efficiency and also increase your safety factor. Okay, the next file we want to look at here is for gouge checking with check surfaces. Really excited about this topic. This is how you control where the tool doesn't and does go or where it does and doesn't go however you want to look at it all right uh, first let's take a look at where the check surfaces are you're going to find this in any of your mill pro tool paths okay there's a new section called gouge check all right you're going to check check one to turn gouge checking on you will need to select check surfaces you want to work with in this case this slot this tapered slot is what I want to work with so we'll go ahead and select that all right from there you will define an allowance an allowance is how close the tool path gets uh, to that surface and then we're going to check either the tool or tool holder and then we have different strategies you can use in this case we're going to do a trim and relink we're going to recompute and what you're going to see is that tool path is now uh, trimmed away from our check surfaces. Okay, this is a very powerful tool. Um, you know, gives you that much more control uh, versus just using boundaries. Okay, so you turn it on by going to your gouge check option and checking it on. All right, uh, you can check against the tool or the tool and the holder. Okay, and then you have to set the strategy you're going to use. In this case, we chose trim and relink and trim at collision only. Okay, and again, what that does is it uh, trims away your tool path. Okay, this next file that we're looking at, this is another example of using check surfaces. Uh, one of the things that I want you to notice is that in this example, we didn't select the walls of this surface. They're straight walls. We selected the top surface only. Okay, and the way that this works is you're going to set an allowance, and that allowance is going to tell the software how close the tool can get to that surface. So here's the allowance value. We're going to increase this number and we're going to recompute. And what you're going to see is the tool path is now further away from that shape. Okay, so you can use allowance to set a different um, uh, a different value that you want to keep the tool away from a surface. Okay, so unlike a boundary where you're driven by center, inside, or out. Uh, now you're driven by a surface and then how far you want to stay away from that surface. And what's really cool about this is you're not limited to a single group of check surfaces. You can use different values. So let's look at this real quick. Let's select our check surface here and let's go ahead and remove this one. So let's uh, delete that one there. Okay. All right. So we've selected this, uh, this surface here and let's say we want this one to stay within this value. And this one, we want to stay a little bit further. Okay, so we're going to trim and re relink. We're going to select this surface separately. Okay, so now we have two different groups, two different allowances. We recompute, and you're going to see one is going to stay further away from this surface, and one's going to be closer to this surface. So, advantage of using check surfaces is you have four different levels. You can use different tolerances for different groups of surfaces. Now in this example, we're going to talk about instead of trimming toolpath away, having it bump up 
or stay away from a surface by some amount, okay? So here you can see we have uh, our toolpath being driven along uh, these, these surfaces here and we wanna finish them, okay? So if we look at, let's see here, this is uh, the surface that we're driving our toolpath along. If we back plot this, you're gonna see that that tool is gonna be uh, gouging right into that surface. And if we tried to use a boundary, uh, you know, we would be moving in on all edges. It, it, it just would be a little more complicated. So using check surfaces is a great way to accommodate this. I can select this inside surface and this outside surface. And then instead of trimming away, Okay, like if, well, let's just go ahead and compute it. You trim it away, you can see that it goes away from that surface there, but really I may not wanna trim it away. I may wanna bump it up, okay? Uh, or retract the tool by a user defined value. And then this will run that tool path along that surface, but it's gonna bump it up. It's gonna stay away from that surface. So it's still rolling down in there, but it's another method of using check surfaces to protect surfaces that you wanna machine. Okay, the next file we wanna look at here has to do with design changes, okay? So we're gonna go into our file here and we have these cuts here. We're gonna just make some changes to the design, okay? And uh, this happens often where design change happens, all right? So we'll exit our sketch and you can see our design changes happen. When we go back into the cam tree, you're gonna see a warning box comes up. Okay, what we wanna do is hit yes on this and then we can recompute our toolpath. You can see right now our toolpath is in the wrong place because before the change we had already programmed the part and then now we've updated the geometry for our feature and what we need to do is recompute it to update for the changes. So we updated the geometry and then we recalculated our toolpath. Now that is a big part of geometry updates is going in there and instead of having to reselect your geometry, we can just update it automatically. This next file here we're looking at, I've already made some changes to the part and as you can see, the toolpath no longer aligns with the part. Let's click into the cam tree and right away we're gonna be warned, just like we were before, if we want to auto update our cam tree. We're gonna say no in this example. Okay, there, not every change that you wanna make do you wanna update automatically. And this gives you the ability to go through and update them one at a time if you choose to. Now the way that that works is you just go over to the feature you wanna update, you right click, update all geometries. That's updated the selection. And then the update the tool path, you right click and recompute. So you can see I was able to update our holes very quickly. We can come in here to our pocket we're gonna update our geometry and then recompute our toolpath. And you can go through each feature, feature by feature, and update and recompute. So this way, it doesn't automatically update everything on you, or there may be some features that you didn't wanna update, even though your geometry changed. And this gives you the ability to say no and control it step by step. Okay, in this example, I've updated my geometry and you can see the toolpath no longer matches my part. I'm gonna to go to the cam tree and then I'll choose yes to auto update my cam tree. Now what this has done is updated all the geometry, but now I need to recompute all the geometry, or I'm sorry, all the toolpath features. So I go to my milling job and I do compute all toolpath. And what this will do is go through and update all your toolpath for you. I wanna thank you for spending some time with us today to learn about the new features in the Bobcam V6 software. Download your copy today at bobcad.com or call us for a one-on-one -on -one demo, 877-262-2231, extension 123.